good afternoon, everyone. It is Monday, the day after Divine Mercy Sunday. I had a couple extra comments I wanted to make that I didn't quite have time for in the homily itself. So, as always, thank you for watching. I, uh, I summarized what hopefully you just watched in the main video, a plenary indulgence for the uh, Divine Mercy Sunday is these five things. Go to confession, receive the Eucharist, obviously in a state of grace, which is what confession is for. Pray for the Pope's intentions, resolve not to sin in the future, pray the chapel of divine mercy. That's what it comes down to. Now, I didn't want to spend my time today talking about the typical misconceptions about indulgences. If you hear the word indulgence and you think about money somehow, I'm sorry, you just have been misinformed. That is not what indulgences are for. Those are uh, classic misuses of what the concept of indulgences has always meant to be. So get all thoughts of money out of your head. They do not apply. Instead, what I want to talk about today is what I think is the most common criticism of indulgences for people that understand that they're not salvation for sale, get out of hell free cards, that sort of thing. And the objection goes something like this. Hey, Father, I'm really struggling with the idea of confession. Why can't I just pray to God for forgiveness of my sins? You know, my answer for that, which is a typical priest response to that is, well, you can do that for the little stuff. If you punch your brother and you say, sorry, God, I shouldn't have punched my brother, for the most part, you can safely conclude that a sin of that nature is resolved without the use of a ministerial priest. You need confession when there is a significant sin, grave matter on your soul, you, you need the sacrament. You need the, the community of another person who, who understands you and is capable of forgiving you in persona Christi. Obviously, it's not the priest, Justin Lopina, forgiving you. It's Jesus Christ forgiving you through the sacrament. In other words, you need confession for extra forgiveness when ordinary prayer will not cut it. And then someone says, all right, Father, I guess I kind of understand that. But now you're taking it one step further and you're saying that if I really want my soul cleaned, if I need industrial strength cleanser, well, then confession isn't good enough. I need all this other stuff in order to truly be forgiven. Uh, so it feels like the Catholic Church never actually says that I'm, I'm good for God, <laughs> except for very specific circumstances. And here's my answer to that. I chose my words carefully for this homily when I said, we are granted indulgences when we are doing exactly what Christ wants us to be doing in life. Confession is powerful. Confession is necessary. I, I really urge any of you watching, go to confession, receive the sacrament of reconciliation when you can. But the problem with confession is it is only one part of the faith. It is only one expectation that Jesus has for you. If you want to know with as much certainty as a human being can know that you are on the way to salvation and eternal life and all that good stuff, you need confession, but you also need the source and summit of our faith, the Eucharist. You need to be working not to sin in the future and actually try to be the best person you can be. You need to trust in the mercy of God and you need to be one with the church, which we express with praying the Pope's intentions. Imagine this for a moment. There's a guy, average Catholic. He, uh, he goes to confession, I don't know, three times a year. So he's, he's made the bare minimum for Catholic, 
for Catholic teaching. He goes to confession, he makes valid confessions every time, he's good in that way, and he goes to church most Sundays. But, like a lot of Catholics, God is not a real part of his life the other six days of the week. He unfortunately has that typical bad habit where God is for Sunday, God is for church, he will listen to the priest to the best of his ability, maybe he'll learn something, but when he goes back to the machine shop on Monday, he will revert right back to whatever bad habits are waiting for him on Monday morning. Very typical situation, very typical Catholic, dare I say. He's got confession. He's got the Eucharist. But, as a priest, I wouldn't be able to say with any confidence that, that his, his spirit is truly made free of, of whatever stain of sin is on there because he has not particularly resisted future sins. Again, it's not about whether you're successful or not. It's about whether you actually care enough to try. And, you know what, if he has acts of cruelty or, uh, or, or a refusal to forgive, again, at the job, he can be very, very forgiving on Sundays, but on Monday he can be a pretty hard boss. He's not all the way there. There are aspects of his faith that are lacking. When we celebrate something that involves a plenary indulgence, we're talking about something where you have every reason to believe that you are in Christ's good graces. It's not just that you have confessed your sins, that's good. It's not just that you went to church on Sunday, that's good. But you're also practicing the unity of being part of something bigger than yourself. You're trying to resist your bad habits, which we all have, and I probably didn't emphasize this enough during my homily yesterday. You are practicing the virtue of mercy as best as you can. If you are doing all five of these things, you may not be a perfect person, but you're as close as you reasonably can be with the tools at your disposal as a flawed mortal being. So I'm almost done. I mentioned before, and I'll say it again, it's not magic. If you think that you get the indulgence, uh, let's say for the sake of argument, you've got the first four down just fine. It's just, just this pesky chaplet you gotta get rid of, and you don't pray the chaplet very often. So you break out your rosary, and you, you pray your chaplet for that eight and a half minutes, and you couldn't care less. You think this is stupid. You think people are stupid. You think people don't deserve your mercy, but you're saying the words. You're saying the words. So you finish the chaplet, and they're like, okay, well, I said the words, therefore the indulgence is mine. Well, I'm sorry, that's, uh, that sounds remarkably like magic to me. Uh, magic spell and all of that, not what this thing is for. Praying the chaplet of divine mercy is a way for us to express, liturgically, prayerfully, it is a way for us to express the mercy that God has for us and the mercy that God wants us to show others. We express it in these little ways, again, that take eight and a half minutes. It's not the words of the chaplet that grant you the indulgence. The chaplet is your expression of divine mercy in your soul. If you want that indulgence, if you want as much certainty as you can have on this earth that you are pleasing Christ and that God has prepared a place in heaven for you, it's not the magic words of the chaplet. It's believing in the mercy of God enough to spend time praying for mercy and committing yourself to show mercy to others in your life. Indulgences are expressions of us being perfectly in line 
with what Christ expects of us as good Catholics. And it's a plenary indulgence when, as far as we can tell, every aspect of our lives is in line with that expectation of Christ. So keep that in mind. I hope that's helpful. Happy Divine Mercy Sunday to you, and God bless you. Thank you.